what I was going to talk about is uh, this 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 issue of of part of agency. So goal directedness is really critical problem solving, but also this this auto poetic step of um, knowing uh, or, or or estimating for yourself, having a model of where you end and the outside world begins. Yes. So this this issue of right, so this 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 inf- sort of informational self construction, and and one one model I have for this has to do with early embryogenesis. So imagine imagine you're a blastodisc of uh, I, you know I don't know a bird or a human, some kind of amniote, and you're you're a disc of about fifty thousand cells something like that. And um, typically we look at this thing and we say, okay, there's one embryo, one individual, it's going to be one agent, it's going to be a, a, a duck or a human or whatever it's going to be. But in or- but, but what are we counting when you say there's 50,000 cells? What do you count? When there's 50,000 cells, there's one embryo. When you say there's one embryo, what are you counting? So what you're counting is the reliable alignment of all the cells towards a specific path in anatomical morphous space, meaning that left to its own devices or even perturbed in various ways, all of the cells will work together to make exactly the right thing, whatever the target morphology for that species is. And you can do all kinds of stuff and move things around and they'll move back. And, you know, you have some, there's, there's all kinds of ingenuity there about getting to where it needs to go. But, but that's what you're counting is that there's one job to be done to build this particular thing. And we all know what it is. And, and I, but, um, but it's actually much more interesting than that, because what you can do, and I used to do this as a grad student with duck embryos, you can take a little needle and you can make some scratches into that blastoderm. And when you make the scratches, you separate it into several islands, two or let's say two or three. And that early system that aligns cells towards being one embryo, it's got this, among other things, what it has is this ability of um, local activation, long range inhibition, such that you know, there's an organizational, it's a few cells become the organizer and they tell everybody else, you guys are not the organizer, I'm the organizer. Mm-hmm. And then and then they sort of organize the embryo. So, so when you separate this thing into disconnected islands, you basically each one of them can't feel the others because there's a there's a bad, there's an empty space between them. Mm-hmm. L- later they will heal. But until that happens, each one is an individual and each one becomes a separate embryo. And when they do heal, you get twins or triplets. And mm-hmm. so now this is very interesting because if you think about that 50,000 cells, every cell is some other cell's neighbor. So the question is, where is the agent, right? And well, there's three of them now, now that's even more interesting because there are some cells on the boundary and they're sort of confused about who they belong to, right? And there's all kinds of medical implications of that that I used to study. Uh, and so um, there's this, uh, this, this idea that the number of agents or selves in this medium, it's like this, 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 this kind of excitable medium or, 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 you know, this, this, this Freudian ocean of potential selves, um, there could be zero, one, two, three, you know, maybe up to half a dozen in, in a typical uh, blastoderm. And you don't know how many there is. It isn't preset. It's not preset by the genetics. It's not preset by the hardware. It, it's an emergent uh, fact of, of, of the physiology where some number of selves will demarcate themselves from the outside world. And so, and so I really like this and I really like, um, uh, thinking that what's what's important, uh, and that's just one one thing that's that's important beyond goal directedness. But but that's th- there are there's some other stuff. But but that 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 process of of uh, de- delineation of a self as separate from the outside world, and the, the fact that you have to do that yourself, as opposed to a lot of our robotics and AI that it, where that's given and and uh, you know pre- predetermined from the outside, the agent doesn't have any ch- choice about it. The, this is this is your limits, and that's yes, it, yeah. right? That, that I think is very important and has all kinds of implications in biology that lead to a lot of the cool things that we like about biology. W- one of them is this weird um, intelligence ratchet, which, which is, which is, which is this um, first, I'll, I'll tell you about the ratchet first and then, and then how it relates to all this. So the ratchet is this, imagine that um, uh, one, one of the f- f- funny things about planaria, these, these flatworms is that they're incredibly regenerative um very reliably regenerative they are uh, cancer resistant they are immortal basically they don't age and yet they have a really chaotic genome and the reason is because when they divide that the way they the way they um uh, reproduce unlike us if we get a mutation in our bodies our children don't automatically inherit that mutation right in the planaria they they rip themselves in half and then each half regenerates so that's how that's how they mostly reproduce and so and of course there are other species that do sperm and egg but but there are species that just regenerate and so that means that any mutation that doesn't kill the cell is amplified into the next generation and, and makes up the body. So they can be mixoploid. Every cell could have a different number of chromosomes, 
you know it's incredibly incredibly messy on the on the on the hardware end mm. and yet the, the the animal with the with the, with a with the with the messiest genome is the one that has the most uh, cancer resistance uh, uh, regenerative ability and uh, less aging so that seems really strange and that bothered me for many years uh, how that can be why is the animal with the with the with the noisiest genome the that has the most uh, morphological stability and so recently we kind of studied this in a computational way and 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 I think we finally have a little bit of insight into how it works um, because this is this whole process this evolutionary process is not dealing with a passive material it's dealing with uh, cells and, and and tissues that themselves have various agendas and physiological space and anatomical space and so on what happens is that um here's it, if, for an example if i take a if i take a tadpole and uh um i i move uh, in the embryo i move the mouth off to the side right uh what happens during during development is that it fixes itself. The mouth the mouth will come back to where it needs to be. So if you had a mutation that made that change, your fitness is not zero because you can't eat. Actually, your fitness will be fine because the mouth will come back. And so those the ability of of uh, the cells to make up for these kind of weird um, uh, uh, mutations and other other problems means that it's it's quite hard for evolution to 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 gauge the quality of the hardware. When you come up for selection, if you're if you're a pretty good tadpole. Selection doesn't know whether you're a good tadpole because your genetics was amazing or you're a good tadpole because your genetics was so-so, but you fixed it, right? The, 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 the structural genome was eh, but, but the competencies fixed it up. So that means that uh, the evolution has a hard time uh, improving, imp even with a little bit of competency, evolution starts to have a hard time improving the structural genome, but what it can do very easily is improve the competency. But when you improve the competency, it becomes even harder to gauge the actual structural uh, genome. And that means that means all the effort goes into increasing the competency and so on and so on. So you get this, you get, you get this uh, positive feedback loop where the more competency in the individual parts, the less emphasis and the less pressure goes on to the hardware, meaning the genome, and the more onto this actual competency. It's like um, Steve Frank once gave me this great example of a, uh, uh, he said that once uh, RAID arrays started being popular in computers, um, the quality of the actual disks has gone down because you don't need to have great disks anymore because you have a RAID array, right? So the pressure mm -hmm. on having having really low error media is it goes goes down. So it's some it's something like this. The pressure is released because of the competency. So if you're a planarian where you know for a fact that you really can't uh, rely on your genome being very clean, right? Your hardware is 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 unreliable. Um, you really uh, all the pressure is on to develop a an algorithm that makes a good worm, no matter what the hardware looks like, but with limits, obviously. Um, and this this actually explains a very weird, uh, you know, sort of fact, which is that uh, unlike every other, uh, most other creatures where you can get mutant lines, right? So so flies with curly wings and albino, you know, rats and things like that. Um, there's no such thing in planaria. There is there are no abnormal lines of planaria except for the two headed form ours, and those are not genetic. Those are those are made by by altering the bioelectrical memory, not by there's nothing genetically wrong with them. So um, so all, all of that uh, bring, bring us back to the original uh, discussion. So all of that means um, that uh, you really uh, because you can't know ahead of time as an embryo, you can't know ahead of time. Do I have the right number of cells, the right size of cells? Is my DNA OK? You don't know any of this. And there are many examples in biology where you know, embryos um, construct themselves despite all sorts of crazy variabilities. It's because none of this is baked in. You have to solve these problems on the fly. So however many cells, bigger cells, smaller cells, they're very good at nature. Um, evolution gives us these like um, problem solving machines. It doesn't just make specific, you know, solutions to specific environments. So, so because of that, because of this need to solve this thing from the word go, I think that, um, the kinds of things that we associate with biological agents are have, are part of this intelligence ratchet where in different spaces, some of it visible to us, some of it we're very bad at noticing, but there's this constant ratcheting of, of problem solving capacity because they have to do this because no one is there to reliably tell them where do you end? What are your sensors? What are your effectors? What space do you work in? No, no, you know, that, it's all up for grabs, right? No, no, no life form that, that, um, uh, uh, took that for granted, could really survive nowadays. Maybe early life did, but nowadays that that wouldn't fly, you know, mm -hmm. with, with all the mm -hmm. competition. So anyway, so that's that's my very long long answer to 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 your to your point. Oh, okay.
So, yeah. So, yeah. So, in, in, in essence, there's these. Um, we have agent agential matter that has uh, evolved over billions of years that have this competency that it can solve um, these um, different problems for keeping itself alive, essentially, or having itself grow. Right. But you're always beginning with this kind of matter, which um, a um, a deep learning system will not have or does not have. Yeah, right. yeah, right. It's, so it's, it's just um, uh, um, calculus and uh, linear algebra, essentially, right? Yeah, I mean, so, 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 right. So, so the things that, that I think are important is that it's a multi scale system where at every level, like I give this talk sometimes called Why Robots Don't Get Cancer, right? It's because, it's because our current technology it only has agents, intelligence or some degree of agency at one level. The parts are pretty dumb. It's the, it's the whole robot that you hope has some intelligence. Mm -hmm. Biology, every, every layer is a problem solving uh, kind of mm -hmm. thing. So, so, so that's so that's useful. The fact that it has to construct itself from scratch every time is useful. The fact that um, it's always uh, metabolically on the edge of uh, of starvation, basically it constantly has to find energy, which means that it has to uh, be really good at uh, doing causal coarse graining on the environment, or else it'll die. Like all all of these things. So that's what makes it different from current devices. But I'm I I I, I really believe that it's not. There isn't a fundamental divide as in you know we will never be able to you know engineers will never be able to duplicate what I, I don't believe that's true actually i think today's technology doesn't do this well that's that's true but mm -hmm. i don't see any reason why if, if we um <clears throat> learn uh the, le the the lessons correctly from biology and i'm sure there are others that that we don't know about i don't see any reason why we couldn't engineer this way later and in fact, in fact, you know, I, 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 with, um, Jamie Davies and I wrote this thing called engineering with agential materials. Like, um, I don't think it's unreachable for us. I, I, I don't think it's, it's magic. I don't think evolution has a monopoly on this. I think engineers could do this, but, but I do agree that today's technologies are not this kind of system. They're, they're, they're different. Yes. I, yeah. I don't disagree with that. I agree that if, um, if they train these systems with a particular curriculum such that um, it needs to essentially survive, then it will learn the heuristics to do that. Yeah. And then that would get you to a, an AI, right? An AGI with, um, with agency. Yeah. Yeah. I, with stronger. And I mean, again, I don't, I don't like um, binary categories on almost anything. So, you know, I, 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 I think they have extremely low agency, but I, but I, 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 and I think we can, I think it's possible to make ones with more. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it's, uh, I, I, I think that uh, we have to be ready also for the fact that, I mean, you know, up until now, all of these things tracked very well together. So anything that spoke, you kind of knew that it went through the same, it had the same existential struggle that you did. It went through the same, you know, you, you kind of could make all these assumptions. So now for the first time, we see some truly diverse intelligences. We see some things that are problem solving uh, agents that are not like us at all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, and, and, and we, we we're now finding that you, in fact, you can dissociate some of this stuff. And I think it's really, a, a lot of people are finding it really hard to, um, get away from this this binary vision that either it's 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 a dumb lookup table or it's just like us those are not the only options right, right there's a diverse right. you know there's a there's a huge space of possible minds that with different failure modes and different mm -hmm. abilities and some of them look like us and some of them don't and 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 it's easy to be fooled but i think the the solution to all this is you know kind of a proper grounding in the diverse intelligence field where you start to understand that um, yeah, these are not our only options. There are many ways to, you know, to 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 have a kind of mind, and um, we're going to have to learn to relate to all these things uh, in a useful and ethical manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what, uh, one of the, I guess, the problem has been that the 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 only intelligence, the only general intelligence that we are familiar with are are humans, and people have built uh, or cognitive psychologists have built their models. I, based on humans that have agency so they can't conceive of a general intelligence that is devoid of agency yeah it's yeah. not in their current models
Now yeah. we have something that looks like appears to be generally intelligent, but it's completely devoid of agency. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I think uh, this this uh, one of the biggest issues is that all of our kind of major sense organs are pointing outward in the three dimensional space, and we're very good at noticing medium sized bodies moving in me in at medium speeds in space, and saying that oh look at you know here's a crow or a, or a, or an ape or a, or an octopus doing something clever, and we can recognize some some intelligence that way. Imagine like, um, imagine if you had uh, a primary sense of your blood chemistry, if you had another sense, kind of like taste, but, but sort of, you know, more, um, but, but, but aiming inwards into your mm -hmm. blood and, and a little, and, and richer, kind of like, almost like vision. I, I think uh, if we had that sense and we sort of grew up with it, we would have absolutely no problems recognizing that we also live in a physiological state space and that our kidneys and our liver are these amazingly intelligent agents that navigate that space because we do you know we 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 um uh, uh, challenge them with various stresses throughout the day and they do all kinds of interesting things and they navigate this space and solve problems for mm -hmm. us and so on we just have a really hard time envisioning intelligence in other problem spaces right but but uh i mean you know humans are kind of general intelligences yes but like we don't typically we as humans don't typically solve problems in um in some of these other spaces where, where, where individual cells, bacteria and other things do very well. Mm -hmm. So we, we, you know, I, I feel like, uh, this kind of human centered approach is, is really, uh, blinding us to a lot of examples of intelligence out there. And that's why people are so freaked out about suddenly being confronted by this, you know, kind of linguistic intelligence. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, this, this, these, these radically different minds are, are all around us all the time. We're just very bad at noticing it. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, what do you make out of the argument that uh, if we uh, that if we continue to go on this path of accelerating AGI, that it's um, it's an ex existential risk to humanity? Does that make sense? Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, so well, I guess a couple of things. Um, we have many things that. Uh, could potentially pose an existential risk that are not necessarily like us or agential or whatever. There are many ways that we could kill ourselves off, right? Mm -hmm. um, I I think it's not impossible that if we don't learn the lessons of diverse intelligence, if we fail to understand how properly to relate to these things, that we could end up uh, really, really having problems. I don't think that's impossible. At the same time, I, I don't think the solution is to uh, try to stop research in some way. I think it's impossible, even even if we, you know, if we, if it was a good idea. And I'm not. I don't think it's a good idea. Um, I think that if 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 it does end up causing a major problem for us, it's going to be because it's not going to be because of anything it does. It's going to be because of our uh, refusal to learn to to relate to other kinds of minds in a novel way. Right. All we know is how to relate to other humans. Barely, we can sort of relate to animals, not very well, but, you know, kind of. Um, and that's it. And we're really not willing to understand anything else. And at that point, uh, yeah, I think I think if, I think if we don't learn that lesson, we're going to have a major problem. But but not even just because of the AGIs, uh, the, the, um, uh, the kind of computer intelligence. I, I really think because of all the biotechnology and, and advances in biorobotics and things like this, we are going to be surrounded by and certainly our children will be surrounded by beings that don't resemble us at all. Meaning, you know, cyborgs, hybrids, uh, uh, chimeras of all kinds, uh, human augmented humans, uh, mm -hmm. augmented, uh, you know, bio robots. There's going to be all kinds of stuff in our environment, and if we don't, uh, regardless of the software AIs, if we don't understand that that uh, we need we need uh, expanded ways of predicting the goals of, of new composite systems that we haven't seen before. Like that's an important science that we don't really have yet. Um, and ethically relating to other beings that don't share a path on the evolutionary tree with us and have a completely radically different intelligence. You know, if we don't wrap our, our, our minds around all of that, I'm pretty sure we're going to have issues and it's not going to be just because of the software agents. It's going to be because of our inflexibility with dealing with radically different beings. <laughs> yeah, so so the the premise of this existential threat, I believe, is it, it boils down to this idea that we cannot imagine a different kind of intelligence other than ourselves, and we look at ourselves, and 
we can imagine that um, people uh, that humans could be um, essentially selfish and basically uh, extinguish every other non uh, other agent, right? So, so it's related to having this uh, limited um, viewpoint or model of um, other uh, intelligences, which is also the, the same problem that you're bringing up, which is if we don't expand that, then yeah. we're going to have a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, yeah, I think, I think we have to. Uh, I think we really need, a, 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 you know, an education in this in this uh, diverse intelligence. Uh, these ideas. Um, and, uh, this is going to be required because, because there's all kinds of stuff coming, not just the software, this, you know, not there's the software version and then, and then, um, yeah, you know, and, and I also see, I also see, uh, some people are really worried, you know, sort of in the opposite direction. It's like, okay, if these things become that, I mean, I get emails, I'm not even really, you know, in the, in the, in that side of the field, but I get emails all the time. You know, what am I going to do when the, you know, when the AI is so good at, uh, you know, uh, doing all the things that it's going to do? I mean, I, I, I think if we can't, uh, if, if you can't do things just because there's somebody else out there who's better than you at doing them, I don't, you know, I kind of assume that everything I do, somebody else is better at it. And and maybe somewhere out in the world, out in the universe, there are aliens that are way better than us at art and, you know, and science and whatever. Like, fine. Does that mean we are now, you know, we can't, you know, we can't go on and do our thing now? I'm not, I'm not bothered by it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I think, I think that's fine. I think we can use it to raise our game uh, as much as, as much as possible. Ultimately significant, you know, very significantly. I think everything about us is ultimately changeable. Um, I, you know, bring it on. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah. So, so, so the expectation here is it's not just the AGIs that's going to, that's going to give us trouble. There'll be alternative um, or other biological uh, uh, general intelligence that will eventually prop up. Yeah. I mean, already. So, well, so, so two things. One, one is, uh, you know, when people say, Oh my God! We're going to make these uh, inc in incredibly intelligent agents and release them into the world. We already do that. It's called having kids. We we already make like all the time. Like you know, right now as we speak, somebody's making a, a really intelligent, uh, you know, a future intelligence with minimal control over over its its uh, you know behavior, education, upbringing. Who the hell knows what it's going to do? Some of them do amazing things. Some of them do horrible things. We already do this. So we already know how how this how this kind of plays out. All kinds of um uh, uh consequences and uh i think that uh uh within on the biological and just just imagine right you got over here you've got a human being that's like 98 percent human but there's a you know there's a chip in the in his brain helping him control a wheelchair and maybe adding some iq points and some stuff like that mm -hmm. over here you got a roomba vacuum cleaner and it's 98% robot, but yeah, he's got some human brain cells on board culture to help him get around the room, right? Okay, so so 98 to 298, every possibility in between is a viable being. Every yeah. every 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 combination, 60, 40, you know, 50, 50, well, like whatever. It's all it's all up for grabs. So you've got you've got hybrids where you've got living brains driving weird robotic bodies and new um, augmented um, uh, prosthetics and new senses. If you want to have a sense of you know, the solar weather, you can do that. If you want to have a sense of the stock market instead of, you know, smell, you can do that. Like the, all of these things exist. All of these things already exist. So we're going to have these creatures and then people will have, you know, there will be, there will be hybrid robotics and, 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 you know, kind of bioengineered beings that uh, if you, if you, if you wanted to make um, a mammal with a third hemisphere, we can do that. We can, we can graft on a third hemisphere of the brain. Why the, you know, no, no, no problem. We can make that today. So um, mm -hmm. all of these kind of creatures are going to have uh, novel bodies and novel embodied minds and all of these old categories. It's a, it's a human, it's a machine, it's a robot, it's a living organism. It's intelligent. No, it's not. It's just, a, you know, it's just a, I mean, like all of that stuff is going out the window. I mean, it was never very good, but it's definitely not going to last the next couple of decades. Mm. And I don't think anyone's prepared for that. <laughs> Absolutely, they're not prepared for that. They're absolutely not prepared for that. They're not even prepared. They're not even prepared to think about it. I have I have constantly uh, arguments with people 
who are who are still using these binary categories. It's just a cell. It's only chemistry and physics. But I, I am a human. Like, okay, let's let's follow you backwards. And guess what? You were just you know a few years and nine months ago, you were a single cell, a little blob of chemistry and physics. So so there's a smooth, gradual continuum. And there's no magic lightning bolt during any of that time period where somebody says, boom, now you've gone from physics to mind. That doesn't exist. So you, so, so there's this continuum and then I can stretch it. Right. So, so I've got this slide where I show, okay, so there's a human in the middle and up here, there's the evolutionary path and you used to be a, a, a microbe up here and there's a developmental path and you used to be a unfertilized oocyte down here. And then you could go sideways and you can do all kinds of biological modifications this way. You can do all kinds of technological modifications this way. All of this stuff is completely continuous. There are no binary categories anywhere. So, so when people uh, insist on thinking, is it intelligent? Is it a machine? You know, it's like um, it's it's. I mean, these categories are 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 worthless now. Uh, we have to we have to rejigger all of that, and then and then comes the hard part of uh, making the institutions fit. Right? It's sort of like the notion of an adult. Right? We have this notion of an adult. What's an adult? Mm -hmm. does, that, does anything happen on your 18th birthday to make you an adult? N nothing. We just we just have this 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 binary cutoff to help you know to help the legal system figure out you know how you're going to get charged in court. But that's it. There's no there's no you know there's not really a a sharp boundary there. So you know um, I've talked to I've talked to uh, legal uh, you know kind of legal scholars and so on about how we're going to figure this out and what you know what it means to um uh to 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 be a person and these are not new i mean science fiction has been dealing with this stuff for you know 150 years so this, these are not new but i i think i think now we're definitely getting to the point where we need to be figuring this out and and this and this ai stuff is just just a, a tip of the iceberg on this oh okay so yeah so yeah so all these other things would likely if they're coming from biological material would likely have some kind of agency greater than the the kind of agency that we have for computers and uh, uh, say deep learning systems. So, so, you, so you're assuming a world that all these things aren't is, are are autonomous and alive and um, and um, I guess uh, have some sort of um, quote unquote free will to do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a whole other that's a whole other kettle of fish. Um, you know, when you look down, I mean again the 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 continuum is really helpful like like you know people say uh that doesn't have any free will it's just a machine obeying physics. Well, if you look at a paramecium, what do you see at a single cell the organism? What do you see? You see chemistry and physics. You don't see any magic glow and so so some people will say you know, so that so then you can go to people go in a couple of directions, right? So some people say, okay, the paramecium has no free will or whatever, uh, but I do, and so now you got a real problem because you were a single cell organism once. You you were a single cell, right? So so where did it show up? At what point? Nobody has a good story of where it shows up. <laughs> That's one way to go. That doesn't work. So so then some people go the other direction and they go, uh, okay, fine. The paramecium does have this this magical uh, whatever. Because it's a living being and, and machines will never, well, if you look inside, right, if you actually look inside a paramecium, what do you see? You see a bunch of little, little cogs and wheels and things that grab onto each other and things that obey, you know, the various pieces of physics. And that's about all you see in there. And there's, I mean, right now we can't make one from scratch, but uh, come on, there's no reason why at some point, right, usually in the field of active matter and, and all of this, we can make things that do that. So um, I really don't believe that uh, these binary categories are helping us. I think for all of these things, the question is what kind and how much, right? So, so when somebody says, um, uh, you know, is it intelligent? Is it uh, is it cognitive? Whatever. I, I don't I don't like the yes or no. I want to say where on the spectrum is it how much and what kind what kind of problem solving capacities what how big is its cognitive light cone right that was the paper before the tame paper it talked about um this notion of the cognitive light cone which is the the spatiotemporal size of the biggest goals right. you can right. pursue right mm -hmm. so how big is your how big is your light cone in what space is it what, what you know is, is it is it in metabolic space is it in physiological mm -hmm. is it in three-dimensional space like where is it um th that's what you really need to know the binary categories don't really you know, don't really, uh, don't really help you much.
But wouldn't uh, like civilization, I mean, uh, the purpose of civilization is basically to uh, ensure uh, humanity's survival. Wouldn't, wouldn't civilization itself basically legislate that humans would pri be prioritized over every other uh, general intelligence? Um, well, the, there's more of a legal thing. Where yeah, you yeah. Say. Well, the le I mean, right. The legal system is going to go crazy. I mean, it already has a million problems because of you know uh, the 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 Twinkie defense and things like this. Where if you if you really follow through neuroscience, you know, the question is, what 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 does it mean that this person could have done otherwise? Well, what exactly does that mean? You know, given 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 a, a, a kind of a, a materialistic uh, view of of the brain. So so the the legal system already has issues, but the human the issue of having hu of 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 prioritizing humans suggests uh, that we have again a, this kind of binary category of what a human is. So so I think to a primitive to a primitive early human, somebody like us, we've got we've got some glasses, we've got some hearing aids, we've got some. Um, you know, some shoes, we got a toothbrush, we got maybe an iPhone in our pocket to them. You're not a human, you're, you're a walking, uh, you know, um, a multi system, uh, some kind of a like, like you're way beyond what a human is. I don't know what you know, you got all this other other stuff. So so just be so so that and in the future, plus also a brain implant that gives you direct access to, you know, to a Google search and some infrared, you know, eyes at the back of your head, like, so so what are you no longer human? So, so that, I, you know, that's, you of course, going to be argued in court, somebody's gonna say, listen, I may have tentacles and I may have a wheel or two, but what's wrong with me? I, I you know, how come I'm not human? I, I have the same, you know, so, so that, um, uh, and that of course also has been dealt with, with science fiction a lot. Um, that brings up the question of, so, so what is an essential human? Like what, what is it to be, to be a human, right? What, what do we want out of that? So let's run down the list. So is it the genome? I don't really care about the genome per se. Like that's, you know, some of these things, the thing to me is that like in, in, in pre, in pre-scientific times, you could have held the view that we are a, a, the pinnacle of creation, whatever we have in terms of our body's limitations, capabilities, our IQ, our lifespan, our um, capacity for, 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 for um, compassion, whatever it is. That those limits were set to us, uh, set by by this like benevolent process, and those are the best they're going to be. Okay, so so we're out of that Garden of Eden now, and now we realize that that's just where evolution left us. That's all. There's nothing. There's nothing magical or or optimal about where we are. I don't believe. I think that uh, evolution is this kind of like meandering uh, sort of search process, and it happened to to find that this particular form is good enough to survive and leave a bunch of offspring. Well, that's great, but I don't see any reason we have to stay that way that it's arbitrary and i i like this this notion of morphological freedom i think i think each of us uh doesn't doesn't it owes no allegiance to this random process that happened to have dumped you at this particular iq level with this level of uh of of you know the damage or birth defects or whatever whatever you've got so uh that means do i care about the keeping the genome pure no i don't do i care about keeping the anatomy pure we gave that up when we started using canes and, and glasses and, and things like that. I don't really care about that. There's nothing magic about this anatomy. I, I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to keep that um, preserved. Uh, what I do think we have that's kind of fundamental is uh, is is in particular the cognitive the uh, a minimal cognitive light cone as far as compassion is concerned. So what I mean by that is the moral ability to actively care about some degree of other some 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 quantity of other beings uh, well-being right and so th that i think is what th that level is what makes us human now going up beyond that fantastic bring it on going down below that i don't think that's good right that's 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 what i would argue against so i would think that modify away change whatever you like to 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 give yourself a better life to to do to fulfill your um uh okay well, you know for your your potential mm -hmm. uh just don't reduce your capacity for moral care in fact you should increase it and this mm -hmm. is this is an argument that we made with um a few colleagues when we wrote, wrote that, that that buddhism paper but but the idea is so 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 that's you know that's what i'm interested in as far as humans i'm not interested i don't care what the genome is i this is all of this is completely arbitrary to me uh, mm -hmm. uh how, how our genetics ended up how our morphology ended up ah, you know, whatever, um, let's improve it. But, but, uh, but, but 
that 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 cognitive light cone with respect to the compassion for others that's got to oh, that 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 should only increase i don't think we should okay. be increasing it so uh, your vision of the future of a civilization is that the citizens of that civilization would have a minimum light cone so to speak compassion light cone anything below the minimum compassion light cone disqualifies you from citizenry so to speak well that's what we have that's kind of what we have now right so so if you're you know if you're a dog or if you're a, you know whatever like you have certain protective rights but you are not a full uh, sort of member of of society right and it it, it just so happens like i i think i think one thing is that uh we are we are kind of special on this planet in the sense that it just so happens that there's basically one dominant species it didn't have to be that way imagine that there was another dominant species that was like i don't know 40 iq points lower like mm -hmm. that, that would be a really tough case right because you know um not low not like not low enough that you could just say animals but mm -hmm. also not high enough that you want them running a nuclear power plant or flying airplanes what do you do like that would be really tough we're just we're just fortunate here that that there's such a gulf right so we could always say oh look you know there's this category but it didn't have to be that way so i, I see i see a future where we look like uh, one of my favorite scenes is um the star wars cantina scene you know where mm -hmm. uh, where right with this like every kind of alien every kind of robot that you know things are on wheels and playing instruments running around Th this is this is what the future looks like to me i think that as long as you've got the light cone to to participate with a degree of responsibility and compassion for others, mm -hmm. you, you are part of the society. And then whether you've got wheels or or you decided to have tentacles or a propeller on your head, that's, you know, that's going to be, I think those kind of people in the future, right? The f future people are going to look back on us and they're going to look at all of our wrangling about, uh, about gender and skin color and prosthetics and, and all of this stuff, they're going to laugh at this. This is going to be like hilarious. There, there's going to be such such variety of embodiment at some point where where you can pretty much live in whatever body you want to live. You can have more IQ. You can have a different kind of perceptual system. Um, this is all of our wrangling over this stuff and and what's a human and and how, it's going to be laughable. And uh, you know that's that's one reason. Um, uh, I, I really like, uh, you know, the, the Star Wars, the Star Wars vision is very much like that, where, you know, the friends with all the droids and all this, the, the in Star Trek, it's kind of kind of different, which I find uh, just horrible. They, uh, it's whatever the year is supposed to be 2500 or something 2400. And they're still they're still arguing about what uh, Commander Data's status is. Yeah, this guy, you know, he's, he serves, <laughs> he serves on the Enterprise, they're still arguing about what, whether, you know, what his what his deal is, hundreds of years later, I think I think that's ridiculous. I uh, think that, uh, you know, but within 100 years from now, maybe sooner, the, all of this will seem uh, assuming we're still alive, and we haven't like blown ourselves up. I think all of this will, will be will be hilarious to, 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 to people of that time. But to have a civilization that accepts that kind of diversity, you would have to have some sort of um, guiding principle that says, okay, it's not yeah. acceptable to have a just single uh, general intelligence, but we're going to accept all these kind of diversity. I think we're, I mean, I think we're well on our way, right? I mean, the principle, if I had to boil this down, I would say, I would say you want to relate ethically to someone, no matter what they look like and where they came from. Does that seem radical nowadays? I mean, it used to seem radical. Nowadays, that doesn't sound so radical, right? And when I say where you came from, I mean, were you evolved? Were you engineered? There's some combination of, I, I think that principle, would, 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 the, would the young people of today, do mm -hmm. you think they, you, you know, they don't find though, those two things, they don't find that particularly weird. This is, I think, I think they just, I, I just think people haven't, fig haven't fully figured out what it means yet, but mm -hmm society is already going that way you're not supposed to treat people uh, worse because of what they look like or how they got here we already know that right but the fear of agi is that this other uh general intelligence which would could become super intelligence very quickly would be a threat to uh our own uh existence I, I, I mean it's not it's not impossible that we engineer something I mean, we did it. We 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 uh, put, put uh, you know leaded gasoline and um, uh, all these other horrible chemicals and 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 a hole in the ozone layer. We we did all this stuff to all you know that could potentially kill us all off mm -hmm. without 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 any agency in any of these things. 
You know, the, the, we, you know, we, we're all walking around with, with high levels of, of lead in our bodies because of all the lead and gasoline. The lead doesn't have much agency. It wasn't trying to kill us. We were just idiots. We did it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, could we, could we engineer uh, uh, software agents and put them, put them in charge of important things and have failure modes that we never anticipated and that, that screws us over? I think it's possible. It isn't going to be because of the intelligence. It's going to be because of our intelligence, not because of its mm -hmm. intelligence. Mm -hmm. If we, you know... Um, yeah.